Hi, my name is Kay and this is Kay's Tiny House. I have zero build experience, but I have lots of drive and very, 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 very amazing friends. I just finished the metal roofing for the tiny house and this is how we installed it. The roofing is black R panel metal. This is different than the siding, which was the nostalgia board and batten style, but the roof did not need all that fancy schmancy stuff. We're just doing the classic R panel. And when you think of roofing, you're like, oh, this is gonna be so easy. It's just a bunch of sheets of metal that go on top and you screw it in. But no, there's a lot of pre-work that needs to be done before you can get to that part. And step one was preparing the eaves. So when you think about roofing, you always want to layer the roofing materials so that water sheds away from the house. So the siding goes all the way up to the eaves and then the eave protrudes just a little bit. Here you can see on the front and back of the house, there is just a board that, I think it's just a two by four that went across it. But on the sides, the gables, we made those six inch eaves that stick out a bit. The trick was what kind of metal piece could cover the eave and then wrap under it and cover the siding. At Metal Mart, my Metal Mart guy came up with a really good plan of making that piece out of two pieces of metal so that you didn't have to bend some crazy shape. The first one would cover just the eave and go wrap around it and then over the siding. And then a second piece would be bent at the angle of the roof and it would go on top of the roof and then cover that eave covering. So it was a really easy, just two piece aspect. We did great on the front and back of the house, but on the sides, for some reason, we did not include the width of the siding. And therefore <laughs> our bent pieces were like three quarters inch too big. Luckily, Doug had a brilliant plan to just use three quarter inch plywood to, and it didn't have to be pretty, it would just at least fill that gap so that the metal had something to touch and wrap around. And luckily I had extra three quarter inch plywood from the floor sheathing. So we were able to cut pieces of wood and nail them in. Doug did the first two. Phil, on another day, took care of the rest. I'm very grateful for him. I know it wasn't a fun time, but he, he made it happen. <laughs> and it's really hard working on the upper gable where the roof pitch changes, because the only way to get a really good angle is from on top of the roof. And so you're bending down trying to hammer things in and it is just not a good time. When we're putting on these eave covers, I'll call them, the trickiest part was bending around the corners because you had to snip the metal in such a way so that it would nicely fold over the corners. And I feel like this was like an origami mental gymnastics skill that of course Doug was good at but I also feel like you'd be good at it if you were good at wrapping presents which I am not good at. Doug what are you doing? I am bending this gable trim metal trim for up there. What are you doing? Widowing? Then we had to put the second part of that piece on and those were bent at the roof angle and then the ones over the gable were just 90 degrees. The next prep work that we had to do was to determine how far we wanted the metal to overhang on the roof. And I think you want this to be about two inches. I just went for two inches because I was like, that's just easy in my head um, and it looks nice. So we had to figure out a way to make sure that we were doing our best to 
keep all the metal sheets aligned. We decided to use string to do that and to figure out how to get the string where we needed it, Doug made these contraptions or jigs where it would rest nicely on the siding and kind of like an L shape above to the height we needed where the nail was. I did have to screw in some holes in the siding. Most of the time we were able to reuse screw holes from the siding, but not always, but it wasn't that big of a deal. I don't think you'll be able to notice when we caulk in the holes afterwards. So we used the string to determine two inches away from the edge and we were able to start putting on sheets. By the way, if it's dented, Kevin walked on your roof. Kevin? Oh, <sighs> when we got to the skylights, we would have to cut the metal so that it would wrap around it. We also realized that we needed another little piece of metal underneath the skylight to again shed water away from the house. When we got to the skylights, Doug measured right but cut wrong. He cut to the measurements instead of cutting from the measurements. So we had to waste a piece and we were really nervous that that would mean we'd had to order more metal. Luckily, oh my gosh, this was so awesome. We got to the very end of the bottom part of the roof with the steeper pitch and when we got to the last piece of metal, we cut it exactly in half and it was perfect for those edges. So we won. K-A team one metal zero. <laughs> when we put on the metal pieces to make the screws look nice and aligned, I would pre-mark where to screw in. I was able to get ridge caps that were bent at to the pitch of my roof. So there were these bendier ones for the lower roof and some flatter ones for the upper roof. Now to make sure that we weren't fighting against the metal to put those ridge caps on, we wanted to make sure that both the sidings on the each side of the roof lined up well enough to where the ridge cap could easily fit on top. So we decided to do one on the front, one on the back and work back and forth <laughs> in that way so that we could make sure that that was staying aligned well. part of the roof it's an 812 pitch so it's super steep and to put the ridge caps on Doug basically straddled the roof and once we got enough sheets on he would then put a ridge cap on and we kind of just went in this order until we got to the edge we used metal to wood screws for most of the when attaching it to the sheathing, but then I also bought some metal to metal screws to kind of help with those extra gaps and, and have the metal closer to the metal. I also was given, I didn't know that I needed this, uh, rolls of putty for the ridge caps. So maybe two inches into the ridge cap, I lined it with putty so that would 
adhere to the metal roofing. We also got these foam inserts for underneath the metal. So that matched the exact ridge of the R panel and put those on. And that was kind of tricky of like, what was the best strategy to put those on? And at one point we're using double-sided tape to pre-adhere them to the metal sheet and then put it on the roof. But ultimately we stuck them to the roof and just measured where they would would should go because even though they're the right size they're really flimsy so to make sure that they were straight and where the bumps were matching to the metal we just measured that and put that on and that worked the easiest that's the way i would recommend doing it in the future once we got to the edge we were then able to put on the rest of the siding for those two little triangle sections where the pitch changes and there's wall Because there was the pitch of the roof and then there was the pitch of the upper roof, there was no way to ensure you were putting those siding pieces level or straight. So we had to do the best we could. And because we had to cut both sides at the angles of the roof, Doug had a smart plan of we would cut one to size and then he would pre-hook the next piece and just follow that angle for the next piece. That worked well to get those siding pieces on. And then we were able to put trim on those corners for the siding, it looked really great. And then we had to work on the upper roof. And this was actually way easier because one, there were no skylights. Two, we had done the rodeo already. We knew how everything should go. And three, we could be on the roof and not have this huge fear of falling and sliding off. So it was really easy to work out um, what we needed to we decided to work from the farthest end of the tiny house back inwards and i was in charge of hanging up the string we have one scaffolding and doug was using it to put on the bottom trim of the gable side so while he was doing that i was on top of the roof laying on my belly trying to screw in the the wooden jigs for the string it's not my favorite moment. It was supposed to be two inches, but I got it to one inch and three quarters. So in the end, to me, that was good enough. Did not meet Doug's standards. I did not care. That was what it was going to be. And in the end, it looks great. So whatever. <laughs> At least it was consistently one and three quarters inch all the way around the top roof. No one will notice. And if you notice, don't tell me. Act like you don't notice. <laughs> Here you can see the morning dew still on the roof. So laying on it meant I got very dirty. So we were able to knock out the top level, top part of the roof in, I want to say two or three days or really half days. Um, so that was really great. We were able to basically move all of our tools to the roof. So we had Phil handing us a new sheet or a new ridge cap. I would mark them, Doug would screw them in, I would screw some in. It was just kind of a constant rotation of work and no one was ever waiting on another person. So that was really great. Hey Kay, I'm recording. What are you doing? Putting the putty on the ridge cap so that it adheres to the roofing. Wait, Phil, you need to blame me. Um, Damn, those calves! I'm telling you. Are those sailor calves? They are. It runs in the family history, family history. My great great grandfather used to run this, do the spice run. 
How is it? So at the very end of the top of the roof, we did have to cut those pieces to size and Doug just cut them right from the roof was not the safest way to cut metal, but he did it. He was fine um, and it all worked out. I mentioned the metal under needed under the skylights. We were able to reuse some leftover metal from <laughs> the where the siding above the first lower roof was, that metal that was bent in this way and it was black and black, we were able to use that under the skylight. So that was really nice. And so Doug took care of that. I started caulking the metal and sealing up any gaps that there are. And I was able to get black caulking to match the metal. So hopefully it won't be too noticeable, even though I'm not the best when it comes to caulking, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm almost wrapped up with that. There is, of course, one more piece of metal that needs to go on the sides because there's still water is able to get through the R panel on the sides of the house. So there's like one last piece of trim to add. Um, so I'll pick up those when it's time. But really, we're ready for the work on the inside and I'm very excited. The exterior is like 99% done, which is crazy it's just insane and I love how it looks and I'm so proud of it it looks so good um, it does not look like I did it and to be honest I didn't do it on my own I have my a team I have Doug Debbie Phil they have been so supportive and helpful in all of this and it's been really really fun Next up will be the interior walls for the bathroom and the bedroom loft and then the mini split. Please subscribe to the channel to follow the progress of the tiny house. It is quite an adventure. And until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye.